Assalamu alaikum, namaskar, adab, sasriya Welcome to Honey Walia show. Today with, I have with me Honorable T.C. Madhu, Minister for uh, Justice and Solicitor of Alberta. T.C. has been involved in the community. He is a social worker, he is volunteer, and he is a lawyer, being a part of husband, father, and a minister. He has been practicing six, from last 16 years and he has practiced in Nigeria and now Alberta, now Minister for Justin and Solicitor. He's going to enlighten us, give us more history about the Black History Month, what is important, what is significant and how we can celebrate. Welcome, Casey. Thank you, Sonil. And it's so good to be on this particular show uh, to speak to you about the Black History Month celebration that we have been having since, uh, you know, the beginning of February. Uh, I do want to wish everyone out there, all of your viewers and listeners, a happy Black History Month. Thank you, sir. Casey, would you mind to tell us what is the importance and the history behind the Black History Month? You know, uh, thank you, Sunil. So uh, for me, Sunil, and uh, for the Black community, it is critically important that we celebrate the early black settlers, the pioneers who came from the United States running away from slavery and Jim Crow uh, to look for a peaceful community in which to live, raise their families, build their families, and to be successful, to live like uh, ordinary human beings. And so when, when they came here, Sonia, they made unimaginable circumstances. I think it is critical that we celebrate the contribution to the sacrifices of those black pioneers who came before us. I 100% agree and salute to them. Uh, so I know, Casey, in the past we have uh, done, in the federal buildings, we have celebrated the month uh, dedicated to the to the community. So this month, how you and the party or the government has celebrated? A great question, Sunil. So obviously, the pandemic has changed our lives. Uh, this is an event that we celebrate in person. Uh, we are a community that believes in social gathering. We believe in human interactions and just like any other community. So this uh, would have been a great celebration where we get to meet one another, uh, you know, socialize, interact, and eat and drink together in honor of the contributions of black people in this province. But it hasn't worked like that. But thanks to the Minister of Culture, Multiculturalism and the Status of Women, the Honorable Lila Sharon are here. And the provincial government that have done everything within their powers, they have deployed it every available resources to make sure that we are able to celebrate Black History Month by uh, online with different events right from the very first month day of February. We have had an event every single day, including today. You know? So I am grateful uh, to the, the Minister of Culture and Multiculturalism and the Status of Women for her tremendous hard work in making sure that we were able to gather also as a community. You know, we have had youth panels. We have had a, uh, renowned professors from the community come to deliver, uh, you know, life-changing speeches about what we must continue to do to build a beloved community and to build a successful province. We have, uh, you know, had the Speaker of the Legislative Assembly of Alberta, uh, uh, um, host a Black History Month celebration where we gathered community speakers, artists, community musicians, uh, spoken word artists, poets, and novelists to showcase their work. And so it has been a month full of celebrations of everything best about the Black community. I really appreciate, you know, that with this being part of the different events, it gets not only to connect with other people, but also gives us the opportunity to learn and educate ourselves about the values we have received and been gifted by the being living in Canada. I really appreciate, sir. 
Thank you. Casey, uh, you have recently appointed Mr. Orla as a special advisor to the Alberta government's review of the Policy Act. Could you tell us a little bit more about like what his roles and responsibility will be? Uh, absolutely. You know, uh, Sunil, you, you, you know that when I was appointed Minister of Justice on August 25th, 2020, I made a commitment to build a, a society in which it doesn't matter where you come from, the color of your skin, the sound of your mother tongue, that in this province, the promise of this province is that anyone who calls this province home can feel respected, can be treated equally, feel secure in this province, and have equal opportunity to succeed and live a fulfilled life. And I made a commitment that we are going to embark on the broadest review of the Police Act since 1988. And that review is ongoing right now. And because I am very particular in making sure that the voices of cultural communities, minority communities, and indigenous communities are heard, it was important for me to appoint a cultural person to be a special advisor to work with the department in the review of the Police Act so that the cultural perspective from an expert you know, is uh, uh, heard. So that is why what Sonila was proud to appoint Dr. Professor Atobe Oriola, who is a professor of criminology uh, uh, at the uni and sociology at the University of Alberta, brilliant, uh, very qualified young man uh, who has written a lot about law enforcement, policing, uh, police practices, interactions with the community to provide that expert advice to folks within the Department of Justice charged with the responsibility to review the police act. I really appreciate, you know, like, um, to tell you the truth now, right? Like, you know, I'm from India. So in about 20 years, we came to Canada and then all my relatives and my, even including my wife, she asked me why we are going to Canada. I said, we are going to Canada because of its value, culture, heritage, and what they give without discrimination, racism, it does not, it gives you equal opportunity, like, you know, it does not make a difference you what color you are, what race you are, what religion, what sexual orientation, what gender, it gives you opportunity to everyone. And that's what we are doing to Canada. Absolutely. So bring this, like, you know, we do talk about the Canadian value, Canadian culture, but racism still exists, you know? We have to acknowledge it. It does exist. Any thoughts on that? You know, a good, uh, you know, observation, uh, Sonia, racism is real. I have always said that. I have been public about that. And that is why, you know, Sonia, uh, if you look at all of the policies that I have pursued, it, they have been very surgical and targeted in making sure that we tackle the issues of systemic racism, that we provide opportunities for people to live a normal life, that our institutions do not discriminate against anyone on the basis of the color of their skin or how they sound, you know, or where they were born. We are now all about it, anyone who call this province home is an Alberta. And so if you, it is important as, you know, a minister, as a government, as individuals and members of our community to acknowledge that we continue to have problems with racism, but more than anything else, to have the political will to make sure that we continue to knock down the barriers that people face as a consequence of racism. You know, I have talked about my own personal experiences uh, in the scenario, and that is why I am reviewing the Police Act. That's why I appointed the, uh, Professor Oriola uh, to ensure that the, the voices of those uh, 
the, the voices of the expert in that particular world are heard. That is why I banned Cardin. That is why I introduced Bill 38, the Justice Status Amendment, at the last legislature to include First Nation police and police commissions. You know, that is why I appointed the very first black person to serve on the committee that appoints judges. We have never had a committee in that committee, a, a, a black person on that committee before. So that is a committee that receives application, reviews application, and makes recommendations for the appointment of provincial court judges. We now have a black person that sits there. That is why this provincial government is reaching out to all cultural communities. That's why we are looking at talent from, it doesn't matter whether you are black or Asian or brown or Latino. We are one big Alberta family. And our government must represent today's Alberta. That's why I said, upon being appointed Minister of Justice, that our justice system must reflect today's Alberta. The four walls of our courtroom must reflect today's Alberta. I think we are making progress, and we will continue to make progress. You know, Sonil, just today, you know, I had a special ceremony with the Minister of Culture and the Minister of Infrastructure, where we had the honor of naming the Federal Plaza before Violet Henry King. Now, Miss Violet Henry King was the very first black person to be called to the bar here in this country and was called to the Alberta Bar in 1956. The very first black person. And so it was a great honor for the provincial government to rename the plaza at the Federal Building after Violet Henry King. So we continue to make progress. You know, I am committed to making sure that we address institutional racism, whether they are, we find them in the public service, whether we find them in our post-secondary institutions, in universities and colleges, whether we find them in the for-profit sector, whether we find them in the private sector, we have to root them out because that is not the promise of Alberta. We cannot, as a society, allow ourselves to be held down, to not reach our full potential because of racism and discrimination. We as a society get to lose. We as a province get to lose by, by holding anyone down as a consequence of discriminatory practices. So, Sonil, you know that regardless of the color of our skin, the, the same color of blood run inside every single human being. I 100% agree, and you know, I really uh, salute, I congratulate you. I don't even have a words to say for your commitment, what you are doing. And I agree with you, whatever color we have, whatever, you know, religion we believe or whatever the choices of life we have, we still have the same color of blood. We breathe the same air, we live on the same earth. So we have to, to respect that, like even though we are different, but we are one. Correct, we are one. And and you know, if, if you open up our brain, it doesn't discriminate whether you are black or white or Asian. It doesn't. It, it, it is the same brain that all of us have got. And so you know, intelligence is a gift that all human races have. And you know, the beauty and the, to reach our full potential is as a consequence of education, of hard, hard work, you know, intentional hard work and opportunities. Those are the things that make us who we are. And every single human being out there, if given the opportunity, you know, would achieve at the same level as anyone else, if the opportunities are there. And I think it's important that we as a society and as a government recognize that, that in the end, it is to our province's best interest that we build a society that provides opportunities for everyone. I 100% agree. Uh, and I believe in that too, you know, racism is there, discrimination is there, and that, but 
you know, we have to work together to end this thing. I, 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 absolutely. You know, absolutely. So, I mean, I, but, you know, the one thing that we can't accept, the one thing we should never allow is to allow division. Is to allow, allow the forces that want to tear us down. You know, Sonila, I have always said this, and let me be blunt to, to our viewers. There are forces out there who have no interest in us solving the real problems that we face. You know, they want to talk about it. They want us to fight ourselves because it is good for politics. Matters of this nature that affects everyone should be a priority of any government. Uh, that is why, Sonil, I, I refuse to accept a, 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 the type of politics that only talks about the issues that we face, but lack the political will to actually solve those problems. And you know, Casey, I want to share something like personal with you today. And I have spoken about this, you know, when I came to Canada, did I speak English? Yes. Could anyone understand me? No, because I spoke with a heavy accent. Um, my pronunciations were different, but the team, my friends, you know, does not make a difference what color they were, what religion they were, what sexual orientation, what gender. They helped me and they're still helping me. And I don't, I should acknowledge, I could have not been here where I'm what I am today without their help. They were black Thank people you. were there, they were white, they're Caucasian, Christian, you name it, Muslim. You know, I'm not pinpointing anyone, but I said it was a team. And I think that that value makes Canada what Canada is. Absolutely. You know, so I agree with you 100%. Ours is a great country. Ours is a great province that wants everyone to succeed. But we must not allow the politics of division to prevent us from getting to that promised land. You know, I am the same way like you, Sonio. Uh, in spite of all of the obstacles and difficulties that we face, I continue to maintain that we have made tremendous progress. You know, I, I get frustrated sometimes when folks from other parts of the country, or in fact, some segment within Alberta wants to accuse Albertans as being racist in a broad, general manner. No, I can't accept that. Albertans are not racist. That doesn't mean, Sunil, that there is no racism and discrimination going on in our province. I think we ought to make a distinction between the minority of Albertans and they are the minority because the vast majority of Albertans really don't care where you come from. They just see you as a fellow decent citizen who is looking to build a life, take care of their families, and contribute to the development of their community. I 100% agree with you. So we can't afford to allow the small minority who wants to paint Alberta as being racist. Because I know in my own life, Sonia, that I will not be here. The black guy that came to this country 16 years ago, I would not be here if it were not for Albertans. You know, I am the MLF for Northern Southwest, Sunil. If you bring together all of the black vote in Southwest, I would not have won the nomination. Talk less of winning the election. They were white. They were Asians. They were people from India and Pakistan and Filipinos. And yes, blacks that supported me, helped me, voted for me, door knocked for me. They were from all races. And the idea that those people in Southwest are racist because they are white people, 
I refuse to accept that. And that is why we, we should never allow any politician to get away with such broad assertion, because it is not true. There is no question, as we saw last weekend, you know, some individuals uh, who professes some hateful idea, ideology and ideas, that doesn't mean that they represent Alberta. I, I think politicians need to be blunt and transparent and honest in our conversation about race, about racism and discrimination. Because if we do talk about it in a careless manner, it will be so difficult to build the alliances, the relationships, and the network that we need to fight it together. Racism is evil, and we, need, we all need to be united in fighting it. I 100% agree with you, John. Can you see, in the end, what message would you like to give to our viewers? How to you know, racism? So, you know, it begins with each and every one of us. It begins in you and me, you know, realizing that we are part of the human race, that we are a virgin, that your aspirations are my aspirations, that you want to be respected, I want to be respected, that you want to live in a decent community, I want to, be, I want to live in a decent community, that I want the freedom and the opportunity to raise my children, and I want you to have the opportunity and the freedom to raise your children. And I want us to build a beloved community, and I want us to make sure that we get to the promised land you know, I want us to build the most functional, strongest economy in this country, you know, Sunil, because if we build a strong community, a strong economy, a strong society, we're able to provide for each and every one of us. It begins with us. It begins with our elected leaders. It begins with our government making the right policy. Sunil, I have always said that good, po good politics begets good public policy coming from the right place. You know, you know, mine, you know, I am conservative, but conservatism of the heart. A, a conservatism that focuses on people, on lives, and livelihood. And, and, you know, to have respect for one another. So to all your viewers, we are in this together. We can overcome this pandemic. We can rebuild our lives. We can build the best possible community if we all realize that each and every one of us have a role to play. Do not allow, and we must not allow, divisive politics to create a wedge between our brothers. We must not allow those who simply want to re use race issues as a means to get elected as a political football to divide us. And we can do this, Sonia. I 100% Casey, and then as a team, as a human, as Albertans, as a Canadian, we can do that. Agreed. Thank you, Casey, for taking um, your valuable time and coming and talking to us and giving us information on the Black history, how we can celebrate and how we can be part of it. And also your your views about uh, racism, discrimination. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Doug viewers. You are watching Honey Valia shows. Um, as I have mentioned earlier too, if you have any questions or you like us to bring any particular guest who can answer your question, please do let us know. If you have any more questions about the whole thing, you are more than welcome to contact us or Honorable Minister's office, they will be able to help you and answer all your questions. Thank you. Keep watching Honey Walia Show. I'm your host, Sonal Cole, taking your leave.